Good morning, everybody. Happy Wednesday. Welcome to another episode of Pre-Market Prep. I'm Spencer Israel. We've got Joel Conan. We've got Dennis Dick. We've got stocks to talk about. Google, PayPal, GM, AMD, Starbucks. A lot of earnings. We'll cover as many stocks as we can on today's show. David Trainer is our guest from New Constructs. He's got hey, some everyone. good insights into some recent earnings reports as well. He'll be on the show at 835 today. So hit that like button and don't go anywhere. I'm serious. This is Pre-Market Prep with Joel Conan, Dennis Dick, and Spencer Israel. All right, good morning, boys. How are we doing? Actually, before we even get to the market, um, today's a very special day. It's a holiday, right? Yeah, yes. it's Groundhog Day. I'll give it a holiday. It's important. And we, I did watch this morning. And wait, what? What? What's the Groundhog's name? I know it's Phil. Punxsutawney. Right? Yeah, punk. Is it Punxsutawney it's Phil. Phil? It's yeah. Punxsutawney yeah. Phil. It's Groundhog Day again, everybody. Can you believe it? It's back again. I hope it doesn't come back tomorrow. That's the main <laughs> thing. As long as it doesn't come back tomorrow, we're okay. If it comes back tomorrow, I'm going to wake up and be really scared. So we're okay. We're okay. As long as it doesn't come back, back, so back. So if here. Phil sees his shadow in six more weeks of winter, if yeah. he does not see his shadow, we're getting spring early. Yeah, I know, and he did. Unfortunately, I watched it this morning live from Punks. Wait, wait it's already it's over? It. It's already over. He saw it. Oh, unfortunately, he facts. saw his shadow this morning. Yeah, about 730 this morning. They did it. So bearer of bad news here. Six more weeks of winter. I got three feet of snow on the ground. So I was looking forward to getting rid of that snow tomorrow. Apparently, it's not going to happen. So Spencer, okay. when are you skis? When when are you heading out uh, when are you heading out of the office? Are you gonna you it's gonna a great, it's uh, a great question. It might have to be hunker down tonight, Joel. We'll, we'll I told see. you on the at the close show, I gave a weather update. I yeah. said it's too warm. We're not gonna yeah. it's not gonna but it's supposed to start a, accumulating now. So we'll see. I mean what I was you getting, sure. a snowstorm? Well they're yeah. talking about two feet. They're talking two feet. Two and, feet? Well that yeah. is a storm. I was yeah, gonna make fun of you because um you know, if we get four or five inches here, they call that basically they just call that Wednesday, but <laughs> <laughs> but up up where I'm at in the snow belt on Georgian Bay, but I tell you, man. Two feet? That's yeah. Serious. No, yeah. Right I, I'm, I'm sure that. But anyways, I'm people sure, that want to hear sure. about the weather, they sure want to hear about stuff. the markets. They want to hear about the markets and S and P's are up forty handles, forty five seventy five. Crude's up a buck thirty eighty nine fifty. Gold's up three sixty eighteen oh five ten. Silver that's up. Where everything's up twenty six and a half cents twenty two eighty six. Bitcoin, that's up $125.3817. Ethereum, that's up $3250 at $2807. So it's the old 20 watt, 20 for one stock split trick. One of the oldest yeah. in the book yeah. to get you straddle riders out there. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And we talked about it yesterday. Remember, I jokingly said, you know, on my, I wrote an Apple straddle once and they split the stock five for one. And I was like, crawling under my desk i was like i'm never writing a straddle again it's unbelievable that i actually just mentioned writing straddles yesterday and look you get straddled again those splits kill you if you're a straddle writer because i believe what do we say is 130 bucks and goog is 300 dollars up so yes it would be very very troublesome to be written the straddle here um basically making new all-time highs i mean here is just an incredible comeback and we're talking about a stock that you know obviously is being driven by that but a stock that basically made a new nine month low one two three four five six seven eight trading days ago is now going to make and making a new all-time high i believe that is an all-time high if we if it went up here at 30 40 just barely yep. but unbelievable comeback here so you got major resistance up here but i've faded faded splits before and they're not fun to fade yeah, so the numbers, frankly, are what the, the numbers were good, but it's almost besides the point this morning, right? Because as we've seen with Apple and with Tesla, when you split your stock, contrary to what Warren Buffett will tell you, uh, the market loves it. 
And they do. so someone yeah. at he at us this morning, they asked, uh, when is the last time we, we saw 20 for one stocks? But I don't know. It's been a, it, it, it's not a very common, it's a big split. Yes, uh, it is. Tesla was what? Four for one. Apple, I think was, was, was what here. What was Apple? Apple was, um, was four for one. Has in uh in uh, August of twenty, uh, Tesla was five for one. Twenty for one is an awful lot. Yeah. So um, that's a big one. A so big one. <laughs> okay, so the math. What's it, it takes to one hundred fifty bucks? Give or take, yeah. Wow, everybody can be trading Google. You know what? I like that better too. Actually, from a trading perspective, um, I hate trading these three thousand dollars stocks. I don't like them a buck wide. I much rather would trade something you know, one hundred fifty. Nice. So the goo goo gal. We'll probably even tighten up even more now once we get that post split. So it will be nice to trade. Um, obviously, the high frequency traders are really all over this one. I used to do, um, you know, the share class contractual arbitrage back in 2000. Remember, Joel? I did the 2003 Viacom. I, yeah. like, I was like me and like 10 other people in the world doing that. Like, seriously. You know why I know that? Because I was 10% of the volume. Just me. Just me on Viacom. I On the, on the lower one, the VIA. And when I was trading it back in 2003, I was on average 10% of the trading volume every single day in that stock. Just me. And there was multiple people at Bright Trading doing it. So I bet you like just our company was like 30 or 40% of the volume on the VIA every single day. High frequency traders have come in. They've arbitraged the hell out of that. Yeah, so they, they kind of tight, have pushed, yeah. you know, all humans out of that space. So the algos really have it. And they do have it on the Goo Goo Gal too. So don't think all of a sudden you're going to make money trading the spread. You know, that's why even when we do these, um, when we do these educational stuff i i talk a little bit about the share class arbitrage but does the straight up arb stuff like that the high frequency traders have that whipped it's when you add a little element of risk that it gets a little more interesting even the risk arbitrage a little more interesting when you add the element of risk but anyways that's the story for another day let's bring it back to the markets goog up 300 dollars is going to have a major impact on a lot of stocks one Think about Amazon. Amazon's ripping higher, which is obvious because it's going to report on Thursday. Everybody's talked about a split for Amazon for a long, long time. Mm -hmm. And now you have Google doing it. So that's probably going to bring up the conversation again that will Amazon, you know, potentially split the stock in the near future if Google's doing it. What are your thoughts there? I think it'd be too copycat. Yeah. So they don't do it right away. Yeah. That's what I think. And I last, think it's trading up a lot because obviously Google's up, but I think it's trading up a lot because of three thousand dollar stock. Like it's if you look at Apple, Apple's up basically nothing today. If you look at Microsoft, it's up basically nothing today. And Amazon's up two point six percent in sympathy, so it's a big move. So the market is buying it probably in anticipation that oh it could happen. But I think you're right. I think it's too copycat. What uh when does Amazon report? I think it's Thursday. Thursday? Yeah. Thursday two days. Close. That's it. My- Again, Apple and, and Microsoft had already reported, so you do see those outsized moves. Facebook lifting here really well, really good too. I mean, obviously, online advertising, but big move up here. So your sympathy moves here right now are Amazon and Facebook really lifting. And then you, you can get into you know some of the other stocks too. I mean, all the tech stocks are, for the most part, higher, and a lot of them are significantly higher. Uh, one of my sources that actually deals with um, Amazon as a retailer saying they're they're just way like they're having supply chain issues and just getting stuff up on the shelves and it's, yeah. like, it's really a huge lag so um you know if you know when they come out with the quarter i think that that's what you'll, you'll be hearing something about supply it, it, if they have a bad quarter go i mean it it's not it hasn't chain. gone away i'll tell you that you know from building a house we're waiting on certain things so i mean it's 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 i think improved the supply chain issues, but they haven't gone away. And labor is a major component. Don't kid yourself. In these supply chain issues, labor is going to be a major component. You know, talk about how many people quit their job yesterday, Spencer. You know, we got the data like forty-seven was, million or something. Yeah, November was bad. December was worse. People are quitting their jobs. People don't want to work for minimum wage. I mean, if you're sitting there and working for twelve or fourteen or fifteen bucks an hour, and you're looking at prices of everything going nuts. I mean, why? I mean, you're, you, you know, you're going to want to try to do different things. I mean, some people want to become day traders and, you know, that's the dream. Obviously, that's not going to work out for the majority of people. But I mean, 
it's frustrating to look and think, oh, I'm making 12 bucks an hour and now I'm going to go and pay, you know, $5 for a gallon or $4 for a gallon of milk. In some cases that's happening here. I'm sorry. Prices are going up. Wage inflation is going to be the issue. It's going to be the one thing that's going to not make this transitory is that there's going to be higher wage inflation to tell you even, you know, just, you know, again, personal examples. Um, my buddy's an electrician. Uh, it's prices, you know, and, and I said, you know, drywallers have gone up. Everything's gone up. Electric, electrician prices going from 55. How much do you think they went up? You know, having to raise price for a while. It goes from 55, not to 60, not to 65, not to 70, to 75. 55 to $75 an hour, just like that. And people will take it. They're price takers right now, and they're going to pay it because there's a demand for trades, and the trades know it. And they're jacking up their wages too. And why not? I mean, this is everyone. So you look and you think those people that are making thirteen or fourteen dollars an hour are going to say, "I need a significant increase to just keep up with the cost of inflation." So uh, that we- puts direct pressure on the supply chain because a lot of these supply chain jobs, the people Rely who are people. in there, yeah, are lower earning. These aren't high earning jobs. A lot of these. So I think that keeps, you know, us, I think that keeps prices moving up. Uh, brief correction. So 4.3 uh, million Americans quit their jobs uh, in uh, in December. That's actually down oh, yeah. 4.5 million in November. So it was down a little bit, but still over 4 million people quit their jobs. It's about 3% on the workforce. It's a lot of people. It's a lot of people. I mean, it's it's scary you know, to a certain extent, like, I don't know where, you know, where we're going here, but I tell you, if nobody wants to work, it's going to be a lot harder to continue to drive economic growth. Yeah. So it's something that's got to be considered here. And now, and obviously interest rates going higher, I don't know how helps that part of it all, but the inflation is such a concern here. The inflation is the driver for everything. Unless, until they fix that problem, Bullard, go ahead. Unless, these people are being replaced by robots, which is actually <laughs> deflationary. Uh, according What's, to Kathy Wood, yeah. Well, I know. I mean, yeah. I mean, if you could get oh, robot, mind. you know, you pay the money out for a robot, and a robot does it, and you do your yeah. one-time capital outlay, and well, we have it at McDonald's. I mean, yep. your teller is now yeah. automated. That's you know, deflationary. That thing that's standing there. That is, you know, right there. Wage inflationary pressures pushing that up. So. These lower paying jobs are going to, some of them are going to go away. I mean, you know, think about what Elon Musk said, you know, when he's talking about his robots and trying to get rid of the monotonous tasks that we do every day. Well, there's a lot of people that make their living doing monotonous tasks. So if you automate all that away, what are those people going to do? So there is a concern here, you know, for, you know, the economy overall that as you get more autonomous, you have less jobs. But right now, we don't have that problem. We have people just not wanting to work. And we that is a completely different problem. With a robot, you don't have to pay for insurance. You don't have to pay for a 401k. They don't call in sick. They don't They don't take vacations. I not mean, yet. Not, yet. not yet. But when they yeah, get smarter, they will. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and, then realize, and then they'll realize we don't need the humans and they'll kill right, us all. We're right, right to Terminator right. again. So, oh, it geez. all comes back to what Terminator a wicked eventually. turn of events. No, all right, yeah. I, I'm bringing, the I'm slippery it slope. I'm bringing it back here. I I have sources actually inside Alphabet, and I actually got uh, I was able to find uh, I I got a video uh, of the executive team of Sergey Brin and Larry Page talking about why they should do the stock split, and um the, so so here they are. So the, 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 this was the inspiration oh, yeah. for for Alphabet's. This makes uh, sense stock split last night they saw this video and they thought yes this is a great idea we need to do this more makes of this makes sense to me yeah, right this makes sense to me right so um <laughs> this is from my sources inside inside the company there we go yeah uh, i think that makes sense to me too looks a little greasy pizza <laughs> okay uh, but let's go over to amd here uh another talk about uh at google and the future of robots uh but uh, it's the same idea that dennis mentioned earlier which is that Tech is having an outsized effect on the market this morning. Well, we we will get back to that theme. Uh, the A and B numbers were frankly nothing short of amazing, as they as they usually are. Right, <laughs> their EPS beat by a lot, their sales beat by a lot, their guidance beat by a lot, everything beat by a lot. 
Uh, Nick uh, Ganguly, I hope I'm saying that right, in the chat asked, any thoughts on shorting AMD today? Because it has had such a violent upswing yesterday after hours. Um, yeah, violent upswing, is that's a way to characterize it for sure. <laughs> It's hard on a good earnings report like that. It's hard. I'm, I'm going to be honest with you. It's really hard to short stocks here. Like, it's been hard. I, I'm trying to short stocks and get my face ripped off, getting stopped out on your shorts. So I don't know. I've been dead wrong the last couple of days. I keep thinking that, you know, it's going to turn around and get ugly again. But the FOMO has taken over. And there is no fear out there except for the fear of missing out. Now everybody fears that they missed the bottom. So this is really driving price. So I think you're looking at dips to buy. I mean, I'd love to come in here and say short AMD at 131. Do I think it could eventually revisit 100? I do, but I don't know. So anyways, the quarter was really good. It's hard to short stocks right now just because you're getting your face ripped off. But I'm not buying them here. So I'm kind of sitting on the hands on a lot of these moves. Do we got Mark? Is Mark right now? Oh, no, it's no, oh, that's right. That's what I thought today. <laughs> no, we don't. Joel's losing track of no, days. That's okay. I lose track of days too sometimes. Yeah, it, 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 time is relative anyway. Um, it really is. Anyway, Joel, you have thoughts on that AMD chart? Oh, man. It is AMD's trading up 1442, 12.35% uh, at 131.20. I, I, if I was long it, and it just ran 30% in four days, I'd probably ring the register. But other than that, I mean, I can't just come in here and start shorting good quarters on stocks right now. The FOMO, you got to see what happens here. It's been really tough. So it's been a tough market to call. I'm going to say, like, I've been wrong the last couple of days for sure. Dead wrong. I thought we'd stall out yesterday. We've ripped higher again here. So, you know, I bought a few stocks near the bottom. Obviously, should have bought a lot more stocks. I did not think it's going to be a four-day ripper. Shorts are caught everywhere on this. It's really been a violent, violent rally. Looks like we're going to 460 on SPY. Google driven here today, but it always seems like something else is driving it. The question is, do we eventually have a rug pull here? I think so, but I don't know. It's pretty violent right now. Hey, hey, can uh, pull up Amazon right now. Okay. Yes. What are we looking at? You don't. You don't see what I'm seeing? Is is my chart just wrong? It's those FINRA prints that are late. Uh, 3023. It's 3110. It did not just collapse eighty dollars. Sorry to disappoint. There it is. It's up eighty six. So always look at your bid and your offer. You don't have to look at your last because you get these outlier late prints from the close of yesterday. And if your charts are taking those in, you got the wrong charts, man. I think you're swim. Ugh. Sorry, guys. Yeah. You, see those, it? They, I, you get what you I, pay for, right? If you're having free charts and they're showing all these FINRA I got faked out. talk to your quote provider and tell them to get rid of the FINRA crap. I got on faked your out. Charts. I'm sorry. I saw Amazon. Shout out, shout out to Trade Station. They didn't pick up that bogus print. <laughs> they didn't. They, so they didn't. Well, our buddies no. at Trade Station are solid. Uh, yeah. Anyway. So don't worry. Amazon is still up eight, or 2.8% today. So <laughs> you don't have to worry about that. Honestly, right. this market's really tough to call, though. Like, everybody wants us to give us market calls, give us calls on this. What are we doing here? What are we doing here? We still are a teaching show here. We're trying to teach different strategies. We're trying to teach different trading ideas, which we, we love to give opinions on stocks. It's fun to be right. It's fun to be wrong. But it's been a tough market to call. I'm calling it the random walk market right now because it's choppy. It's sloppy. I think if you got a significant dip, it looks like the lows of the move are in. I mean, at least in, in the short term. I would go, let's take you to PayPal, and I'll give you a trade off of this one. All right. The PayPal numbers, as good as AMD and Google were, that's maybe how bad PayPal was. Uh, I guess the, earn the earnings was, like, fine, whatever, but they gave some weak guidance. That's the bottom line here. The forward-looking stuff is always more important than the backward-looking stuff. Uh, they, they're... Um, their their Q4 rev, uh, Q4 EPS missed by a smidge, but their fiscal year revenue outlook uh, for EP or for EPS and revenue, the guidance was light on both. So um, that's the story here. And uh, PayPal getting hit, obviously again making new lows. Everybody's going to be wanting to come in and buy the dip on PayPal. It's making new lows on the move. I hate buying stocks making new lows. It is the kind of market that buy the dip is working again. So it makes you think, but a lot of people were trying to buy this dip last night. I'll just say you got Square trading down nine bucks. 
on the PayPal earnings, and they didn't even say anything. And everybody wanted to own Square yesterday. I think you get Square down this 112, 115 area here. I'm long Square. I bought it was one of the few stocks I did buy on the dip. I bought it at 106. I think if you're looking for a dip to buy something, I'm not necessarily saying I'm doing that because I've already bought it, but I think you look at Square because here's a pure play that is getting slammed on PayPal, and we know that they trade the relationship-based trades here. But I think this is one that they could buy back. So I'd be more inclined to buy the Square dip than the PayPal dip. Thoughts, concerns, Joel? Uh, I mean, I like the strategy. And I, I, um, I know you picked this up for the long term. And we talked about, you know, the dynamics, the changing, you know, monetary system. So uh, you definitely, when we talked on the phone that one day, you, you were debating between Square and PayPal. I'm glad I chose Square. <laughs> and, and you hit the, you hit the right button I got on the that right one. one. Yeah, so... Uh, let's see. Well, first look at PayPal. PayPal's trading, trading down 18%, uh, $31.68 at 144.25. I think I heard that this could be the worst day on record, uh, for PayPal. If it can, uh, continues in this, uh, uh, fashion, you can look at the monthlies on that one. If you want to find support, uh, it's square. Uh, you, if you're inclined to try and buy the dip here, you did have, uh, let's call the low just 102 for simple math, high one, uh, 139, 20, let's call it 15 point move. So it, it's coming right back into the, to, you know, the mid range of, uh, of this real rally here. So triple D's looking a little bit lower, 112, 113. I think, let's see, maybe it doesn't get that low. Maybe it only, you know, hangs out. What's a two day low? Oh, two day low is 112.68. So a big stock like this, if you want to accumulate a longer term position, give yourself a little bit of a zone you know, today and try and pick it up on the cheap, but you're, you're buying a dip in a, in a market that's ripping you're something that you already bought the dip on. You're looking to redeploy and there's going to be those opportunities today. Just like the market's up a lot today, there's going to be other issues. You know, well, PayPal obviously is having its own that are they're going to be down today or going to be sold today. It that may not where- bounce back. It could continue to go down. I mean, again, diversification, again, this is not the type of market that, you know, I want to be a hundred percent invested into. A lot of people are doing that, but I'd rather buy a stock that's dipping on, a, on on when they didn't even say anything being a pure play than trying to chase something like AMD that's up, you know, 12, 13 oh, yeah. bucks on a good earnings report. I just don't like chasing. Again, maybe this is going to be the environment. Maybe AMD is going up another 20. I mean, people who were chasing Google last night are being rewarded because it was up 150. Now it's up 250. So maybe it's going to work. But more often than not, I lose money when I get the FOMO and I start chasing. So, and we all get it. I mean, you know, we all find ourselves chasing from time to time. Oh, yeah. It's human, natural human tendency. I've done this professionally for 22 years. I've made millions of physical trades. I still chase every once in a while. And then you got to slap yourself on the wrist. And it's like, what are you doing? You know, this is, you know, how you lose money is usually when you're chasing stocks. So I'm just saying, if you're all cash and you're like, I think I missed it, I take a shot on Square. You know, you're getting a pullback here. You're getting, you know, basically almost back to the 50% retracement of this violent three-day rally, 101, going up to 130. So we'll call it 115 area, 116 area. Uh, I think you take a shot on it. But if if that's only if you've got, you know, a whole pile of cash. If you're sitting all invested, I'm not buying dips at all. I'm selling rips. And what I was doing yesterday, again, I sold more stocks. So, you know, a mistake again, but I went out, I sold more stocks again because I don't think we're just going right back up and ripping and making new all-time highs. And I very well might be wrong, but I've been selling stocks into the string. It lowers the bar. PayPal just took that bar, that that, yes. that all-time high jump bar, and they just lowered it down to something special. Yes. could probably uh, do the Fosbury flop over. I, I completely nobody, agree. You got a big bar reference. lower here. You know what the Fosbury flop is? I do, but no, I don't think people most people get that reference. Um, so okay. someone, those in the chat asking when Square reports, it's not for a while. Or I'm sorry, Block. Block is the name of the company. Uh, February 24th. 
So we got three weeks until. Black. I actually remember when it came out that day. I was like, I'd sell it when it was one ninety five, and they changed the name. <laughs> and we're going to a hundred bucks. Wait, Kathy wasn't wait. listening; she bought all the way down. But anyway, how, I, is, how is Kathy? Anybody checked on her lately? But she sure. buy some stuff. Is she buying some stuff, or she got no dry powder left? Let's go look. Well, I'll get the. I'm bringing up the email from last night. Did we get an email last night? Did she still do uh, that? Well, now no. You oh, do yeah, that. Here it is. You do that. I'm looking at when they changed the name. Um. I remember it was like 195 that day. Um, Kathy no, loaded it up and I was like, I'd sell it. Oh, she did buy some Square yesterday. Is she buying the rips now? Square was up yesterday. Kathy, you're doing it backwards here. You got to listen to the show. She sold skills, more skills. She dumped 3 million shares of that. She's done with skills. She thinks they don't have the December 1st. Pay December the bills. 1st is when Square skills changed. Skills ain't the paying the bills. Skills ain't paying the bills. She dumped that out of every portfolio. She is selling like crazy yesterday. Holy <laughs> mackerel. Look at all the stocks she sold. She sold. She did buy a few. She bought a little bit more Robinhood. She bought a little bit more Unity. She bought more Tesla. She bought more SE. But she sold 3D systems. She sold all these small companies that I don't even follow. Sold some doc. Oh, small DocuSign wasn't enough. To yeah, but she, she's selling it to Strand. That's what you Sold you're, Palantir. You do. Yeah, she's she's starting to listen to pre-market prep. Maybe she's no, going to start whatever. turning this thing around if she starts listening to the show. <laughs> Uh, turn the ship around turn the arc around we're referring to you can subscribe to kathy wood's email talk to me three goose in the chat you can subscribe to kathy uh, wood's email just google uh arc email list and you'll find it arkk email list and yeah. you'll find it, it. it goes she's out. never she's never been on this show that uh, someone just commented kathy, well uh, I've, they I've never come back due to the things. shame i don't know if she wants to come on the show she's probably <laughs> not a huge fan of me if she's ever listened to anything that I've said or tweeted. I've never tweeted at her though, so she probably doesn't even know I talk about her. She's pretty big. When was she on? Uh, I'll, I'll the, tell you. What was the big Ben Zing interview with her? I'll tell you exactly when it was. Let me see. It was March 3rd. March 3rd. Was that the top? <laughs> <laughs> Let's see. What are you talking about? She bought? I'm joking. Time? No, no, no. When when she when she came on Ben Zinger Live last year. When, uh, Wait, what can I bring up? A R K K. Oh yeah, it was Jason. Yeah, it was March third. Yeah, she so she has been on Benzinga shows before. Yeah, she was she just wanted to come on our show. Right, right. She's like, right. yeah, that she, dance she, guy. I don't like him. He buys at reasonable I, price. I, I, I somehow I don't, like I don't think costs. that was it. I don't think that was <laughs> it. somehow I highly doubt that was it. Um, I know I'm joking. Okay, let, let, let's let's move on while Joel looks up whether that was the top or not. Let's move on to some other uh, earnings reports. We've talked uh, Alphabet, we talked AMD, we talked PayPal. Uh, we talked General Motors. We did not talk GM and we didn't talk Starbucks yet, and I want to do both of those. So let's do GM first. Sure. Um, I didn't even look at their numbers until right they now. They were great. In but the this pro, is... the uh, headline EPS beat the estimate of buck thirty-five versus buck nineteen. The sales uh, came in just a little bit on the light side, thirty-three point yeah. five or thirty-four billion dollars. They gave some fiscal year net income guidance that so looked like it was in line with estimates, and um, as expected, talked a lot about their EV investments going forward and how they plan to scale up those scale up those. Uh, the, those productions the market likes that conversation yeah so you know um i'm long gm we know i'm long gm i bought it twice bought it early and then bought it well um back to basically break even here around 55 it's around my cost basis so i did the whole never frown average down joel and it's working out for me look at this uh the 59 originally or the 60 purchase which i thought the 60 was going to hold and it didn't, and then it created, and I should have got the hell out. I actually tried to get out of it, and I just got subpennied by some off-exchange market maker on a standing order I had in my long-term yeah. investment account. But that's for a story for another day. <laughs> I literally missed it by a subpenny. My sale it was kind of when it started breaking down. I was like, I think I'll get it cheaper, and then I was trying to hit myself too because I was trading my long-term portfolio, which I'm not supposed to be doing. I just hate it when I trade my long-term portfolio. Um, they're tracking you. They're tracking your long-term portfolio I, now. No, you stick the <laughs> order out there, and you have it, like I'm doing a million things, and I don't open the account. And I look, and I was like, "Oh, GM, I think it trade up to my price, fifty-five eighty-five or fifty-nine eighty-five. I was trying to sell it at, and uh, I was going to take a small loss on it because I had bought in the sixty handle, but I had a icky feeling, and the feeling was right, and the high was fifty-nine eighty-four nine. So oh. it literally, like, I missed my sale on my GM by the sub penny and you know what if i would have been at 59.84 the high would have been 59.83.9 that's how they screw you and they don't let you know 
these off exchange market makers stepping in front of your orders. But nobody talks about that because they don't understand it. But that's how they make their money stepping in front of your order and sticking you with uh, a stock that falls 10 bucks in the next five days. <laughs> but again, that's a story for another day. I didn't that's frown. I averaged down, bought more than 50 and brought my cost basis down to 55. Here we are. I can't buy 55 because I already did. That's a song, I think. <laughs> Uh, let's see. Uh, it just touched uh, 56 in the pre-market. So why don't you use that as a target on the upside initial target um, and then find some daily highs after that. If, in fact, it can get to 56, uh, you might be able to see the top of yesterday's range. If you're, you know, if you're trying to buy a dip that comes in at 54, 24. Mm, yeah, I saw some people. Never mind. So Chad's talking about DWAC is almost back to where I bought it and sold it, actually. So that's fun. But let's let's stick with uh, the earnings. Let's come all the way back to I know. DWAC doesn't never re- sell. DWAC really went away. Never Trump sell stock. anything. Stock. That's the takeaway from this. Show. Trump wins. Uh, never sell. What about Starbucks here? This is a report that I, 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 if I had remembered, frankly, and I had, if I had 10 minutes to spare, I would have bought some bought some short term puts on this, but I didn't. Uh and I but I, I, I wanted I had the idea very late though. Uh the EPS came in very light, uh seventy two cents versus eighty cents. Their sales uh that they beat, but um every restaurant is struggling right now. We talked about wage increases, uh or general inflation across the, the food supply chain, supply shortages. So uh, the Starbucks is very, I mean, it, it, it dipped, then it ripped, and now it's down again. Uh, a lot going on in that chart, but this to me was one that uh, I just like felt it in my bones is going to be a weak report. And you know what? It The rotation, the index rotation with Google sets this up for fail too because they're hitting the non-tech components of the QQQs today. Oh. So, I mean, you're going to get the outlawed outlier, but because Google was ripping and I've talked about the ETF effects and don't kid yourself, there's ETF effects affecting the price of Starbucks right now because Google ripped so much. Last night, before last night, the S&P, and if we went, well, you can look at the Qs too, but maybe we should use the Qs as an example. Google was almost the entire gain in the S&P futures and the majority of the gain in the Qs. So what's that mean is, you know, if you just do the quick math, let's do it just for fun on SPY right now. We'll do a simplistic example. Google's approximately, let's do some rounding for the simple math. Approximately four percent. Approximately four percent. The Google and the Google. <laughs> so if you take a ten percent move, again rounding, just for simplicity purposes, somebody will say it's nine point seven seven percent. Ten percent, four percent. It's point four percent of spy. So spy, the spy. That's how much it is is the spy move. So spy is up point seven four percent right now. So spy is up an extra point three four percent. But point four over half of the spy gain this morning is just Google. So last night, SPY was trading up just Google. So it literally was trading up just as much as Google was. So that means the other 499 stocks in the SPY have to actually be flat. So when you come in, you see SPY ripping up 30 handles. Make sure it's not just one component driving it. We see this on the next three days on Google, Facebook, Amazon, because it's such heavy weights, especially in Apple, Microsoft report too. Q, same story. It's a big chunk of it. So what they do is they have rotation within the index itself. And when you see a major component really ripping higher and the queues aren't up enough to keep up, they hit the non-tech components of the queues. We've talked about these ETF effects before. They are true. People fight with me all the time. I've made money trading this stuff for years. So I know what the hell I'm talking about here. There'll be somebody arguing that I don't know what I'm talking about. My PL says otherwise. So what is- we will see is that there will be weakness in the non-tech components of the queues, relative weakness. Doesn't mean they're necessarily going to be down but they're not going to be up. If you look at the QQQ right now, trading up 1.42%, the majority of those non-tech QQQ components will probably be flat or even slightly down. And that's the rotation effects in the ETF to make it all add up. Absolutely. Dennis, does this help at all? I, you know, when you, I don't have the Qs, but I got the top 10 components up here in the S&P. Yeah. And you, you're seeing here the S&P, you know, spider right now up 0.76, right? Yeah. With the S&P. Google outsized move here up 9.9%. You're taking, yeah. well, why is my Berkshire hat? I'm like, why is my Berkshire Hathaway not up? Why, why is exactly. my, my, where's my, why is my, why yeah. is my GP Morgan not up? Why is Johnson and Johnson flat? What's going on here? And they'll call it just rotation into tech, but it's the ETF effects that make that whole true. that it all has to add up. So if you've only got, if, if Google, so this is a simplistic example, spies up 0.77% and Google's 0.4% of that. 
that means you only got 0.37% for everything else. Now you got Amazon way up. You got Facebook way up with your other components. You start adding it all up and it's like, oh, you know, it's pre- they pretty much ate it all up. That's why Apple is basically not up today because there's no room for it. Unless Spy keeps ripping, Apple can't rip because there's no room for it to go higher. It's all got to add up. At 930, it all adds up. And, you know, and, and these, these strategies apply pre-market after hours more than anything. Because after 930, the high-frequency traders have it all in line and everything is where it everything should be. Everything is priced. But because yep. there's so many components that are widespread in the pre-market, if you go down to the lower components, the S&P, sometimes there's no trades in the pre-market. You know, like bring up like some like 495th stock, Joel, just for fun. Like bring up one like that's really low-weighted. Uh, I don't have them in front of me. Do you have – oh, you don't have those in front of you either. I, but bring I, up I something. It'll be really I, wide in the pre-market. So yes. all that is a guessing game. There's literally, you've got these stocks that are major components that you kind of know where they are, but there's like two, 300 stocks in the S&P where you don't know where they are because they're not really trading. So the ARBs yeah, are they... guessing it's a little bit. So you're guessing. So you're saying, okay, well, this one's probably going to be weak. And things can change after 930. But right now, other things being equal, with that many stocks up in the S&P, the other stocks need to be flat or even slightly lower. So Dennis, I'm just curious, like, Obviously, the existence of the NASDAQ 100 index, uh, it, it makes it makes this happen. But the QQQs have ballooned uh, in terms of size, right? Like, I'm just, is this is this arbitrage? Like, how long has it been working? Because the QQQ 10 years ago had $32 billion in assets. It was tiny. Yeah. Tiny compared to, now it's got $191 billion in assets. So it's it's ballooned in the last, in the last decade. Um, so it's working. As, it's a great question. And, I, and it's working more and more. So it's working better. It works better now than it did last year. And as it gets bigger and bigger and bigger, this strategy more is going to work more and more and more yeah. because huh. it's so heavily weighted. When it was small, right. it wasn't as influential on everything. But as it gets bigger, it has more of an effect. So that actually means like when I'm talking, you know, and I've talked about this, you know, we taught this, you know, in our educational events. Joel, I did 10 minutes on this specifically. There's like 20 non-tech components in the QQQs, you know, like Walgreens Boots, PepsiCo, you know, there's a reason that those things aren't higher today. The main reason is that the S&Ps and the Qs are not up enough to allow it. All right. Let's bring on our guest today, David Trainer, uh, founder and CEO of New Constructs, always like looking behind the headlines, underneath the headlines, into the footnotes of these earnings reports. And he has some good stuff for us. David, good morning. How are we doing? Doing great. How are you guys doing? Doing fantastic. I don't know if you heard the news, but we do have six more weeks of winter. So <laughs> there's that. But other than that, we're doing great. So nice. um, are, are you are you uh, out from under the snow? Well, you guys got hit pretty hard there. Yeah. We're in Nashville, man. We don't get it too You're in Nashville? Nashville? Yeah. Oh, wait, what? Really? Wait, All right. I'm going were, to visit. I'm going to visit Dave. I think you were in Boston. Nashville. No, no, not Boston. Uh, and we're all full, full of Joel, by the way. We're not letting any more people in Nashville. We're full. We've had too many people move here. Don't come. Joel, don't come. People escaping the high-tax states to come to a better place. Yeah, I know. It's full. Country music, man. Country music. Uh, David, I wanted to have you on today because there's earnings euphoria out here. Uh, well, obviously, Google with the split, but AMD – can you put a little damper on this earnings euphoria? Like, is this is this it? Like, it doesn't get any better than this. This is peak earnings for Apple, peak earnings for Google. This is the peak, top, top, top. You know, I mean, it's hard to argue against the strength of those businesses, uh, for sure, Joel. I wish I could throw some more water on on that parade for you, but you know, look, I think with Google, the the um, the big question in the room is is regulation. Uh, and antitrust, because uh, Google owns the internet. You know, I mean, all the other search engines index through Google. You know, for bad websites. So if Google puts something on a blacklist, blacklist, that's such a such a, shuts it down around the world. So there's a, a huge concentration of information power with Google. Uh, we know the advertising business tracks so much of everything that everybody does, um, and that's something that people are just now really becoming aware of. And uh, it, it's a really interesting phenomenon when you think about sort of how Google set up the infrastructure to track search. And they were way ahead of the curve in terms of all of this infrastructure, which meant that so many of the other browsers and search mechanisms on the Internet ended up just sort of outsourcing it to Google, uh, including, I think, most of what the government does to surveil. So 
the government needs Google to be that big, uh, but I don't know as consumers, we want that. Um, so that's how big Google is. They're so big and so successful that it's going to take the government, I think, to slow them down. Do you think they're going to, though? I mean, I, I, know, I don't think, heard, I, honestly, no. I sort of, yeah, I, sort of I mean, they're just, they're too big to fail, you know, kind of right. like, I you think, know, yeah, that, I just, um, but anyways, but uh, what about, what about some of these other uh, earnings? Uh, AMD, I mean, are you finding, I mean, obviously regulators are not going to be stepping into that except, you know, pumping up the supply of chips. Do you see anything in the weeds in uh, the AMD earnings? No, AMD's strong business. Uh, you know, it's getting a little bit expensive. Uh, but, you know, yeah, I think, like semiconductors, you know, there's a supply shortage there. Uh, there's no going to be no shortage of demand for what those firms produce. And so, uh, what, you know, I wouldn't, I'm, I'm just not saying, I'm not saying that the stock is great. I mean, the stock's looking expensive, not as expensive as some other stocks that have hit, had done well recently uh, and shown some good and bad earnings. But, um, yeah, I, I would, I would be, I would not be tempted to to step in front of the AMD truck at this point. Okay, I wanted to just one last thing, and I'll let the the guys take it away here. What about that? What about the banks? The bank earnings now they they have not. JP JP Morgan's got quite a haircut after its earnings report, and this is the backdrop of a higher interest rate environment. I mean, is you know rates going up? Is that gonna is that gonna uh, cut into the pie on the spreads uh, for these banks? Is that what the market's thinking? Or are we heading? Or your other camp out there? I don't know what you know where they are putting their tents, but recession. We're talking recession. Why why have the banks re responded? I know J.P. Morgan had a mixed report, but some of the not, not enough to get pounded like it did, in my opinion. I mean, I think some of it is what Dennis was talking about, right? Which is there's so much popularity in some of these big tech names that it sucks the capital out of everything else. Uh, you know, I think we've seen that phenomenon strongly uh, with the tech sector and with banks for a while. I mean, I feel, I feel like some of these big banks, they're better than an index fund for all the reasons Dennis was talking about. Because these index funds, as they become increasingly levered to these big names, tech names, they're going to be increasingly levered on the downside, you know, and look, Tesla and Netflix, these are ticking time bombs. They don't have real businesses or sustainable cash flows or anything close to what their, their stock prices imply. And so I feel like the banks, like it's safer than an index fund. It's not diversified to own JP Morgan, but I think it might be safer because it's, it's a huge cash flow generator. It's cheap and it's well levered to what is a rising rate environment. You know, I mean, yeah, that one's just a head scratcher. We've loved JP Morgan. It's been on our focus list for a while. I, I mean, I think stocks like that, like a, a best in class return on invested capital, huge cash flow generator. I don't know. That's that's a that's a gem. Wait, wait, hold on though. So wait, I'm not gonna then that you glossed over that Netflix and Tesla comment. Let's go back to that, that, <laughs> that, that for a second here. Tesla can maybe understand because you know they, they they still have to prove they can produce cars at scale, but Netflix, you said they don't have a real business? Uh, I don't think, no, I mean, I mean, let me qualify. They don't have a real business with a moat. All right. Streaming content is not difficult. Look, even you guys can stream content, right? Oh, uh, we, uh, anybody, <laughs> anybody. we try, we try. <laughs> we do a better job than we CNBC keep changing platforms. Half those people, so you have a, their you mics have a are no there. good, or this is no good. <laughs> We're pretty consistent on our stream. And I think we do a better job than CNBC. Now so we got three producers, but anyways, go ahead. <laughs> No, but my point is really that like they're just getting attacked from all angles with respect to competition. Uh, they don't make money, right? That's what I mean by not having a good business. Netflix has burned like ten billion in cash over the last five years. A business like like Disney, excluding its acquisition of Fox, has generated twenty billion. Uh, Netflix is in this catch twenty two. If they make money, they don't have subscriber growth because if, if they uh, cut back on content costs, which is what they need in order to generate cash flow, they won't sub generate subscribers. And we saw that in spades last year. Uh, they cut back on, on during COVID, they cut back during um, production on production and content creation yeah. and subscriber growth really plummeted. Uh, and then now they're spending a bunch and they're going to probably burn five or five to 10 billion just this year on content creation. Why is that? They don't have enough ways to monetize the content. You know, we always like to juxtapose Disney. Look at all the ways that Disney can monetize content, not just streaming. For them, streaming can be a loss leader. It's just another way to onboard people into the Disney platform 
that where they can monetize them across merchandising, theme parks, box office movies, all these things that Disney does that make a lot of money that, te- that, that Netflix doesn't make. Well, not not yet. They are getting into gaming, so maybe there's that. You know, so it, it yeah, they're going like- to do that well. I mean, look at look who's on the gaming. These aren't small companies either. Microsoft and Sony. Oh, Netflix is going to just jump in there and make money. Come on, <laughs> man, like, right? You know, I mean, they're so far behind on that. They're just not. It's not an easy. These are businesses that aren't just sitting around with cash on the table because these big companies are leaving it there for a new entrant to come on and steal market share. It's not how it works. Uh, and and then what about Tesla? I mean, I, I you, we talked about this previously, and I, I know you have strong opinions there, but uh, that that business seems relative to prior years as stable as it's been. That's right. That's right. No, they're they're making some cars and they're generating yeah. a little bit of money, uh, but it's honestly literally a drop in the bucket compared to what the valuation of the stock implies. Right at at nine hundred bucks, the stock implies that Tesla is going to sell more EVs than the entire electric vehicle market is expected to be in terms of the number of cars by 2030. Right. right. So Tesla is priced as if every other car business, every other EV yeah. business goes out of business. That's including the other upstarts and new entrants. And here we see GM, Ford, Stellantis, Volkswagen, I- I I, yeah, we we all we get all that, but that's been fighting the Netflix valuation thing has been a losing battle forever. So I I, I don't know how you keep doing that because it's <laughs> tough. It's tough. I, I, I'm with you, know you mean, David. Though? I mean, I've been with you on the Tesla valuation for a You're long right. time, and dead wrong because the stock keeps going up, and I don't understand. I own General Motors and Ford because I was like, oh, reasonable valuations going to be EV players. I don't have to buy the nosebleed valuation Tesla to get, you know, some exposure in this sector. But I tell you, the people who have done that have done really, really well with it. It made Kathy Wood. It made her put her on the map. She was she is who she is because of Tesla. There is no doubt. She came yeah. there with the crazy, you know, number and the crazy call when it was one hundred and fifty dollars a share was going to four thousand. And it did. And everybody just thought she has the, the crystal ball for everything. Obviously, it hasn't worked out that way. But I mean. Tesla's just been, it's its own animal and it's tough to do and value that thing fundamentally and trade it fundamentally. No, you're right. You're right. Uh, and and I think that's kind of a, a broader picture for, for us at New Constructs is that the, 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 the fact that rates are no longer going down and, and we're seeing tighter money on the margin, I think it's going to bring us back to, uh, to fundamentals. I mean, look at how Kathy Wood's done in the last few months. Look at how a lot of these high-flying names, whether it's Lemonade or Fastly or Teladoc, right? I mean, these stock Peloton, I mean, they're getting absolutely crushed. Why? Because in a world where you don't have unlimited amount of funds, right? Like you can't just borrow or lever to just get more money and put more in, yeah. right? When funds become more limited, what, do you be, what, what happens? You become more discerning because you can't just throw money unlimited at something if it's not going to make money or you can't trust it to actually be fundamentally sound. And I think we've already seen a nice shift back to from growth to value. All the traditional value charts are looking better. Um, we're, I think, sort of value 2.0. We're doing a lot more work than a traditional value firm. But I do think fundamentals are going to matter. And people are going to care about understanding fundamentals more. You're going to need to, to be successful going forward. But Dennis, you were right. Like, we've been so wrong about Netflix and Tesla uh, for a long time. But we were wrong about Peloton. We, we were wrong about... For sure. About about Beyond Meat, we're wrong about Airbnb. We're wrong about a lot of these IPOs and other high flying stocks for a while. And then last year, man, we were right. It's true. <laughs> it's, it's <laughs> like the fundamental started to work again. <laughs> now, yeah. in the last four days, I'm like, ah, it's all stopped working again. So <laughs> I think they're coming for Netflix and and, and Tesla. I mean, look, I'm look, actually long Netflix at, now, but <laughs> which is Netflix funny, but Tesla, yeah, in, that's not uh, Netflix that's not bombed twenty percent in a day last week, right? Because they came out with slightly lower guidance. I mean, that is a bubble waiting to pop. Same with Tesla. Um, but you know, look, they do have their fans, and that's going to make it tough. But I, I think, look, it's inevitable. It's really inevitable unless you believe that you really believe that Tesla is going to magically get into all these other businesses. And, and I'll, and I'll submit one thing on that front. They like to like some of the bull arguments for Tesla that, yeah, you know, Elon's the next Jeff Bezos, you know, we thought Amazon was just a bookseller and it got into all these other things. One huge difference between Amazon and Tesla and Bezos and Musk. 
Bezos never telegraphed what business he was going into. He didn't give it away. Why? Because doing that invites competition. The fact that Musk is bragging about stuff he's going to do before he's done it. Yeah. I yeah. see that as like, that's just like the 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 snake oil salesman I, telling you they're going to do stuff to sucker you in. It's just competitively unintelligent to telegraph to your competitors what you're going to do before you do it. Tim Only Cook, makes things harder. Tim, if Tim you're Cook, really going to do it, you don't do that. Tim Cook just said that as well. He said, we have a different model, right? We don't tell you what we, – we only so announce secretive. stuff when we when it's ready to, for market. We don't announce stuff four years early. But two words for you, humanoid robots. David Trainer is the founder and CEO of New Constructs. They do Thanks, David. Fantastic research. Yeah. Check it out. David, thank you. A pleasure as always. Yeah, thanks for having me, guys. All right. Uh, always fun to chat with him. All right. Let's do some – Ticker time. If you have a ticker for us, drop it in the chat. We will take a look. I want to start with EA. They had earnings last sure. night. I did not look at the numbers. Let's go to the pro right now and do that. Um, Shop fast last night off this report. What oh, were the numbers? Wow. The numbers uh, looks like they were okay, actually. The the EPS, $3.20. Sales of $2.5 billion. And... Um, I, I don't know. I mean, I don't know what to make of this, honestly. Uh, I, I, I don't think the market I, I, knew what to make either here, yeah. Spencer, because Goodbye. bring up the chart after hours here, Joel. This was, it got, they hammered it on the initial number down to like 121. So all the way down, the news algos do it wrong all the time. They nail it all the way down to support, and then it bounced right off support. So I don't know who's selling it way down that 120 support. That was a huge level for this thing. Okay. Then they ripped it. In the next half hour, they ripped it all the way back up, and it was actually green. And now they've started to leak it again. So go try to figure out this one. I don't know. The market hasn't even figured it out yet either. Um, I'm not long EA anymore. I kind of want to be if it got down to the low hundreds. I don't know if it's going to get there um, anytime soon, but... It's on my shopping list. I still like the e gamings. I the the, the e, um, or I still like the game makers. I still like esports. I still like all that stuff. I think it's all still got a good story. EA's valuation is not crazy. I own Take Two. It's the only one I own right now. We know I've sold my uh, Zynga I and I sold my Activision sold Blizzard. I kind of. Uh, I kind of want to own EA, but I'd like no, it a lot lower. No, no, it. no, because I'm looking a little bit deeper here, and it looks like their uh, fiscal year revenue was a little bit – the guidance was a little bit light uh, and lighter than their prior number as well. They guided $7.5 bill versus uh, – estimate closer to $7.7 billion. Uh, the bottom line is the space is hot in terms of M&A, and that may be providing a floor here. I, I think so too. I yeah. think if EA, no one's gonna buy EA though. Right? Well, um, why yeah. not? We just bought Activision. Why not? I guess probably real close. I mean, I it, what's and especially since we don't know, I guess the Activision is gonna go through. But what's the market caps? Activision versus EA. I think some, Activision's bigger. I want to start some rumors. EA is uh thirty six point seven billion dollars. Activision is uh six, yeah. EA is like. A little more than half the size. Okay. Of, of, of so somebody action. could scoop it up. Yep. I don't think it's going to happen. You know, well, obviously we've had Michael Pactor on the show. He brought us the originally years ago King or King Global or whatever the heck it was called back then. The yeah. Candy Crush Maker. It got bought out. He brought us Glue Mobile. It got bought out. Zynga. He's brought us. It got bought out. He's never saying anything about EA and bought out and then and, and Activision <laughs> Blizzard, but Activision Blizzard was one of his picks too. So I defer to Michael Pactor for yeah. all my gaming analysis there. What does he have? Does he have a buy on EA? No, um, I'm not sure. But cover? He must cover it. The, the reason I said that about EA is because, you know, of course, Activision took like quite a haircut, right? And where EA is still. Still relatively close to, uh, well, I mean, Actor has, has a buy rating. On the on EA, one one twenty ish. It's interesting. I mean, where it got down to last night, I don't know if it's going to get down there. But I'm not a, opposed to buying the step. I it's, it's just not gone anywhere. It's been a really quiet. Like you look at this longer term. Look at that top right corner, Joel. And look at the chart. I mean, we're just kind of hanging here, head and shouldery. So the technicals don't actually look that great. I don't know. I, I think it's a curveball. I'm not doing anything on it. You know what? You know what? This uh, you guys are gonna you guys are gonna slap me aside the head, but. I'm going to draw a Mickey D's analogy here. And Mickey D's, of course, you had a strong market, helped it out. 
But uh, when Mickey D had their earnings, right, they were they were pounded it down, and there were there were like three lows at the two forty eight area. And the way I looked at it was that was pretty good support, right? Three sessions in a row. So I was thinking, if in fact this could hold two forty eight, it had some upside. Well, on that day, it showed some metal. It held two forty eight, and then of course, Mister Market helped it out. But when I look at this EA chart. I kind of get the same the same feeling here. Look at that. Four lows, the same area, 129, right? Round it off. So I'll use 129 as resistance, right? But if in fact, you know, if, if you scoop it up cheap, it gets up there the first time, you know, old lows, resistance. But if this thing can show like it wants to hold 129, then there's considerable upside in it. So number of the day, right? The best number of the day. In any stock is 129 in EA. Wow, all right. Number of the day, EA, 129. Um, uh, to the ticker time we go. Sorry, everyone, we, we got long on the EA conversation. Let's go to uh, – here, we can look at Qualcomm for Steve Zach. How is, don't, they, don't they report? The, they report tonight. Tonight, yeah. It's all and uh, it is up trading off of – well, all the chip makers are up yeah. here. So I think this is really driving all the chips today. I mean, you can bring up any chip with AMD trading up 11% as long as you're not Intel. You're going to be higher. And uh, Qualcomm obviously getting the lift off of that. I'm long Qualcomm. I'm in from 61 bucks. I'm sticking with it. 190 is super duper major. Absolutely huge resistance up there. You're getting the majority of it back. So if you're so inclined to be nervous taking the report, I would ring the register. I've had it forever. I'm taking it through the report. Uh, yeah, just, you know, just rounded it off here. You're getting about halfway back of this move, right? 30 point. Oh no, you got over halfway back. I'm wrong. 30 point move. You're holding 175. If you're looking for a resistance point today, if you want to lighten up, it's down close to 186. 186 was your January 18th high. Uh, I'm looking for tickers that we don't normally discuss, like like DTE from Lord Jam. Didn't oh my didn't, gosh, didn't utility J- stock. Didn't Jason say he in the chat he oh, he was buying DTE? Didn't someone say that, or did I make that up? I feel like someone in the chat said they're buying DTE the other day. Um, these are defensive stocks. If the market starts to continue to go higher, they'll start to hit this type of stuff. Lots of money hiding here. The yield is not great. Um, on DTE, there's better. You, if you want a bigger yield, there's other utility stocks out there that'll give you a better yield. This is one of the lower yielding ones. Um, I don't want to hide in utilities here. I've been selling all my utilities for the simple reason is that if we really go into a rising interest rate environment, these are dividend plays, and those dividends will be less attractive if rates are going higher. So if they, all of a sudden you know the market starts to crash again, they'll start to flock into this. But this stuff moves uh, counter to the market. Really, you got all kinds of tops and highs up here at one twenty. Um, I would, I would, I don't want to own it. You know what? Did this chart's telling me? And uh, what is it? The XLU too? That they're not afraid of that. Whoever's hiding out in this, they're they're just not afraid of the Fed. They think it's hogwash, all these rates going they're, up. They're, it's defensive. You. So the market yeah. has shown weakness. So people hide in this stuff. They hide in the staples. They hide in the utilities. They hide in some of the REITs to a certain extent. They look for yield. When they're moving away from growth, they're moving to yield. It's just the natural rotations that have kept this higher. But if we continue to see the growth trade pick up steam, then this gets hit. And if interest rates really start going high, I think I think it's almost a lose-lose for utilities in the long run. I don't I don't want to own them here. Hey, there's Unless a- they're like six, there's some few up there that are like six, seven percenters. Maybe those are better, but they've come so far. I mean, Southern was one. I, I bought it back when it had a six and a half percent dividend. I owned it when it was 45. I sold it when it was 60 because like the dividend's not that great anymore. It's 3.8%. So I uh, like Enbridge is a good one in Canada. That's got a huge dividend. I just sold it recently though, because when I bought it, I bought it at like $30 and the yield was nine. Now it's down to 6.3. So it's still a pretty good yielder. I'd rather own an Enbridge than a Southern. What's the symbol reason. on that one? ENB. It's I'm one glad of the biggest sold. utilities. Everybody, right. I get three Enbridge bills. So I mean, I'm, we're paying them money every month. So. As long as that, as long as that pipe doesn't uh, burst um, under, underneath <laughs> Lake Michigan, they're going right, to pollute the whole world. You know that. I'm Wait. glad you got rid of that stock. That was one. That's one thing I was holding against you. Last one here. People are asking. There's a bunch of stocks in the chat, and all the charts look the same. Unity, Affirm. Uh, oh shoot, what was the other? Uh, Unity Affirm? Yeah. Up, I got a hop. I'll let you guys cover yeah, those. Unity sure, Affirm sure. Upstart, and then there was one more, but the, the charts look identical, so let's just we can apply the same. They've analysis. all had wicked, wicked bounces, and right. again, I don't like chasing. Snapchat. I mean, Snapchat. what was the other one? I mean, if you were buying it three days ago, 
the stock was forty eight dollars. Now it's sixty seven. A firm sixty five this morning. Yeah. Down a little bit this morning, but I mean, this is a forty eight. This is a fifty percent move, isn't it? Like close to it, like twenty from the sixty seven twenty box. You're like a forty percent stocks up forty percent in four days. I've never made a lot of money buying a stock that's up 40% in four days. So you got to give a perspective. I know Kramer came out last night and he was saying, buy all the ARC stocks. I think he's doing it backwards. I think they've had too big of a move. I got to get a pullback on those now. Is the low end? Maybe. And you can say, oh yeah, but it was, you know, a firm was $190, $170. But I mean, you still got to look at it from the perspective of the people who were buying a few days ago. It, it just had a 40% move. It's a big move. Upstart, same thing. Big mm-hmm. move. The low of the move, seven trading sessions ago, was $75. $115. So $40 on a $75 stock. It's a 55% in five days. That is chasing. There's a difference between buying the dip on AMD or Apple and buying the dip on Upstart or Affirm. They're just different kinds of companies. They're at different stages of their of their life. Um, For sure. You've so, got stable. You've got companies yeah. that are making money. It's not a story. It's a real company. The AMD 100, and I'm kicking myself on it because I looked at it. Oh my I goodness. thought about the AMD 100 because I it was such a big level. Like you look at it, the 100 was just the natural place for it to bounce. It bounced right where it should have. I would love it to get back down, to cut it in half now. Like I know it's 130. It would have been nice to buy it in going into the report, but I didn't want to like, you know, buy something into the report. But look at I, I, I'd love a pullback in AMD. The 100, the, the buyers at 100 were geniuses, no doubt. Kramer's giving them heat because the sellers, I mean, he's right. The, the 100 was just a huge level. All the ducks were in a row for it to bounce off that level, and it absolutely did. But now it's up 30% from there. Three days, Spencer. I mean, I know, hard to come in here and, and say, okay, well, now you know is the time you know to buy AMD. It just rallied 30% in three days. Those are big moves. Yeah. All right. Uh, I know we missed more tickers in the chat. They will cover uh, the rest. I saw match in there. We didn't cover match today. We'll, we'll cover that on live trading with Benzinga. Coming up next on this channel, Dennis, have a good rest of your day, man. Go make some money. Everyone else, I'm going to wrap this show up and uh, go over to our next show. Mitch, Zunaid, Ryan, live trading through the open, hanging out and just talking stocks and talking the market and uh, having fun because that's what we do. So thank you to our guest today, David Trainer. Thanks to all of you in our chat. Hey, by the way, this has been Zynga Pro. It's up on the screen. It's what we use. It's what I use to get all my information. Seriously, all my information, uh, my headlines, my earnings numbers, my estimates, my calendar, my charts. Uh, it's all in here, right? Benzinga Pro. Get a free two-week trial by going to pro.benzinga.com. If you have any questions about Benzinga Pro at all, please email this email address that's on the screen, onboarding at benzinga.com. If you're like, ha- I don't care if you're if you want to know, like, how much does it cost? What do I get? Literally, there is no question that it, that is that is inappropriate for them. So, uh, onboarding at benzinga.com, check it out. Uh, and please remember that all the information from our show is meant to be used as informational purposes, not for investing or training advice. All right, I'm hopping off uh, live trading with Benzinga going live in a couple of minutes. Everyone, stay green today. And uh, if you're in the Midwest, North area like we are, then uh, stay warm. <laughs> Thank you.